computer scientists, referred to now as the Gang of Four, wrote an industry-defining book in 1994 called Design Patterns. They identified 23 design patterns that were recurring solutions to common problems in object-oriented software design. Design patterns offer templated solutions to recurring design problems in software engineering to solve specific issues within a code base, such as how to organize the code, manage the relationships, or handle communication between components. These patterns provide a shared vocabulary for developers to discuss and implement solutions to, design, to the design problems. They significantly impact the software development by promoting best practices, fostering a deeper understanding of object-oriented design, and laying the foundation for a structured approach to solving design challenges. One of the most popular patterns of the past two decades has been MVC, which stands for Model View Controller. It wasn't one of the 23 patterns that the Gang of Four identified. It was actually developed in the 1970s. But it was with the advent of internet-based applications that MVC really took root and became a foundational architecture for creating three-tier business applications. The MVC pattern seeks to separate the application into three separate components sometimes referred to as layers. The view is the user interface that the user sees and provides interaction with. The model is the data layer and defines the structure of the data. And the controller is the communications mediator between the view and the model. It handles the user input and often the business logic and serves to update both the model and the view layers. There are several variations and some or all the business logic may reside in the model layer. Thus far in this .NET MAUI course, we've primarily created applications with the view component consisting of views or controls created in XAML or c -sharp, and with the UI logic and the business logic in our c -sharp code behind, which in reality really functions as the controller. The c -sharp handles events and provides updates to the view by refreshing property values of the various view elements. In the last project of working with the JSON data, we added a model data class and the c -sharp code behind controller manage the CRUD operations of creating new records, reading existing data, updating, and deleting the records. Some might argue this is a variation of MVC known as MVP or Model View Presenter, as the middle component is largely focused on preparing the presentation of data and communicates more directly with the data source, funneling it through the model structure. But with .NET MAUI and actually Xamarin before it, Microsoft recommends and pushes a different architecture design pattern known as MVVM, or Model View View Model. At first glance, that it might appear that we're just changing the controller name to View Model, but that's really not the case. There are some very significant differences, and these are lauded as providing greater isolation of the three layers to make unit testing much easier to configure. In MVVM, the View's C# -sharp code behind becomes part of the View and provides initialization of the view's UI build and binding context. It does not contain any of the UI logic or the business logic. The changing display of the view's components is not through direct manipulation of the control's properties, but rather through the binding of data values in the view model and as communicated to it by the model values. This allows the component to be further separated. In fact, the view model should be completely unaware of the view and it broadcasts changes in property values to which the view has a listening channel. Data binding is the key methodology here to updating. We saw data binding a bit in our data template for the collection view when we created the JSON demo project earlier. Another difference is in how events are handled. In the MVC approach, we wrote c -sharp methods as event handlers springing into action when the user clicked a button moved a slider thumb, or entered text into an entry. To separate the linkage, the MVVM design issues commands from the view, which are processed in the view model, allowing the UI logic to be more easily tested. The business logic most often resides in the model layer of the MVVM design, but there are variations where it's wholly in the VM or split between the two. The model communicates changes in data to the view model via update notifications, and the view model then handles CRUD operations as needed. Let's take a look at how this plays out in a simple app in .NET MAUI. For that, we'll return to an earlier project in our beginning c -sharp course of finding the hypotenuse of a right triangle given its two shorter sides, and then also calculate the area and the perimeter of the triangle. 
In Visual Studio, I created a project called MVVM01 as a demo of various approaches to solving the problem of a triangle calculator. In the app shell, you'll see that I have three different paths set up. Two of them are commented out. The first one's using my view, the second one's using my view two, and then my view three. Three different views set up, and I put those in a folder called views. And you'll see here also have a folder called models and a folder called view model. So traditionally, we would create those three different folders for the MVVM approach and putting the different classes in the appropriate folder. So the my view takes the traditional basic approach of just creating an interface in XAML and then code behind that contains the UI and business logic. Let me just run this in our emulator. In our interface, we have a series of labels up at the top, including the labels as example. There's just some content information. And then the working part of it is below that example. We have two entry fields where we can specify a value. So I have three and four as the default. I can click the calculate button and I see the hypotenuse, the area, and the perimeter each set to two decimals. If I change this, let's say let's make it six and eight, I get the values of 10 as our hypotenuse and 24 for the area and the perimeter. Those are all correct values. So you can see the XAML code here for the entries and for that label and the button, we have names set up. I have a clicked event of BTN calc clicked, and we're simply changing the text properties in our C-sharp code behind in the project. Here's our BTN calc clicked button. We're calculating the value of the hypotenuse, the area of the perimeter, setting up that output text as three different lines, and then we're changing that text property if something goes wrong, then we say that something went wrong. So we're doing this in an if structure. So no model here, just a view and basically a controller, which is our C-sharp code behind. I'm going to end the application. Let's go back to our app XAML. And this time I'm going to run it with the MyView2. Let's take a look at that code. really is exactly the same other than the text at the top has changed a little bit to talk about the MVC approach, but our working code for the entries and the button and the output label are identical. And again, we can click the calculate button and we see that pot news the area in the perimeter. And as we did before, I could change these. We'll go six and eight again. Click calculate and we get the same results. The difference here is in the fact that we created a model. A model called triangle.cs. It has properties of side A, side B, hypotenuse area and perimeter. We have our constructor, we're gonna pass it A and B. And then I have some business logic here. We can calculate the values hypotenuse area and perimeter together. We could do those separately if we wanted. And then another one called get output that calls that calculate values, creates our output string and returns the results as a string. Let's take a look at the C sharp code behind where we implement this. So we're using the MVV, MVVM01 models folder contents. We have a directive there. I create a triangle called my triangle. So I'm referencing that, that model, passing it three and four. It's going to construct our instance. And then for the BTN calculate, I have variables called up for double side A, side B. We're going to make sure that those variables are not empty and contain valid data. If they do, we're going to set my triangle dot side A to si dot side A to the value of side A and my triangle dot side B to the value of side B. So we're updating that instance of my triangle. 
Then lbloutput.txt equals my triangle.getoutput. This is going to return that string, which is going to go into the lbloutput.txt. So the business logic is happening in the model. Let me end that. And we'll go back to our app saml.cs. Let's comment that one out. And now let's run the myview3, which is the MVVM design pattern. So let's take a look at that code. So again, we have the information at the top. It just reflects what the MVVM pattern is like. And then underneath the example, we've made some changes. Notice that all of the references to the names have been removed from our labels and the button because they serve no purpose. We are not referencing these objects in the controller or in, the, in this case, the view model. And the values of the text for the two entries and that output label, we're using binding. We're using binding of properties. In this case, my side A, my side B, and my output. The other change here is that in the button, we're not using the clicked event. We're issuing a command and we're binding that to, to our view model as calculate. Let's take a look at that view model code. So our view model folder. The view model implements the I notify property changed interface. That's going to allow the view model to communicate with the view. We've set up properties for my side A, my side B, my output, as well as the button. That's going to be the binding going back to our view. And then we have a public event, property changed event handler called property changed. That's going to create our listener back for the view. We create an instance of triangle again as my triangle. When we're implementing the view model, our constructor here is we're going to set my side A and my side B to the values of my triangle instance. And we'll set the output, my output property to enter sides A and B, then click the calculate button. That's going to update our view. Then here's our calculate command. And for this, we're actually using a Lambda expression. So calculate equals new command. We're not passing any arguments, but the body of the text is this goes into operator from Lambda. And our body here is my triangle dot side A equals, and we're going to get the value that's in that entry, which is related to the property, my side A, and then my side B. And then my output is going to equal my triangle dot get output, kind of what we did before with the MVC pattern. We're going to send out a notification that my output has changed. We're invoking this task of property changed and then the property that is being updated. That's our, our very basic model view, view model approach. Let's run this so you can see if this works. Not much difference here in the looks of the program. Different text for MVVM, but now we can click on calculate. We get the results we had before. I can change these again to six and eight. Click calculate and we get the same results we had previously. So everything is working through the view model, but it's not accessing the view model directly. It simply is listening for changes to these properties. And that would allow us to set up some unit tests for the logic of the view model, as well as the logic that's in our model. Our next project will be an MVVM solution. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.